There's been a big controversy recently over the Muslim Burkini. Uh, there are a few towns and localities in France that have banned them. I believe the number was three as of last week, but I think today it's up to five. Uh, now, since the original banning, a French court upheld the ban, and a judge said that burkinis can cause offense, and the punishment of a fine and taking off the burkini is, quote, necessary, appropriate, and proportionate. Uh, well, now we have uh, the first pictures of this policy in action. There's a logical consequence of this policy. Uh, you can see what's happening here. Armed police officers walk up to this woman on the beach and say, okay, we're going to need you to go ahead and uh, take that off. So, um, what's my takeaway from this? Well, look, there are two totally separate things that are true at the same time in this conversation. So the first thing is, the burkini, and more broadly, you know, the burqa, the niqab, etc. Those things are extremely conservative. They just are. Now, you know, today you have this new group of people that are, that can put a spin on it and, you know, they say, well, no, my interpretation of it is, and I've heard this before, you know, Muslim women saying, it, it, we're, us women are so precious that we're like diamonds, we're like jewels, and we need to be covered up, and therefore this is empowerment, this isn't disempowerment. So this is my view of it. Look, I'm not begrudging your personal view of it. You could view it however you want on a personal basis and at a personal level. That's totally fine. Uh, but I'm saying, understand that uh, from a more general view, its roots are extremely conservative, and it is extremely fundamentalist. And the whole idea of covering up women does stem from the idea that, okay, women are property. And, you know, you don't have individual rights, you don't have freedom, and the man decides he wants to cover you up because you are like his property. So, you know, you can... Take that mindset and that ideology and rationalize it or come up with a new reason why you think it's okay and why you think you choose to do it. Again, that's fine. But just understand the roots of it. There's no denying that it's extremely conservative and fundamentalist in its nature. So, that's one thing that's true on this. I, I, don't, I don't like it when people try to force other people to pretend like, no, no, it's old, it's totally liberal and, you know, it's totally empowering. No, again, you could view it like that, but the roots of it are clear. And the whole idea of covering up women does stem from misogyny and sexism within fundamentalist Islam. And look, you don't have to take my word for it. Go read the fucking books. There's a hadith that says that women are, quote, mentally deficient. That's not very empowering. That's the exact opposite. So, look, I'm against that. That's not okay. That's not cool. Women are not mentally deficient. I do not think women are mentally deficient. There are, you know, in, in Islam, there are different rules for uh, inheritance, and women get less than men. That is quite clearly not saying you are equal. That's saying the opposite. So don't insult our intelligence by saying the only interpretation of this that makes sense is to say that covering up women is liberal. It's not, okay? Again, I don't begrudge you if you said, uh, well, here's my argument as to why I perceive it that way. That's fine. But when you yell at other people for saying, dude, that's super fundamentalist and conservative, you're wrong. Okay. That's point number one. And that's a very important point. Point number two is, I of course wouldn't ban them. You want to know why? Dude, I wouldn't ban you from walking around in a KKK outfit. I wouldn't ban you from walking around in a Nazi outfit. And that's the point, is people act like, well, it's simple. You just ban the thing that uh, is super conservative and fundamentalist and uh, bad, and then that's, that's good, right? Now we have a more secular, more liberal society. No, you just open the door to sheer authoritarianism. Because, okay, so next, do you ban nuns? I hate to break it to you, nuns cover up very much like conservative Muslim women. So do you ban nuns? And if you don't, well then you're admitting that I'm specifically targeting one religion, and then that is an attack on freedom of religion. So, okay, so you, do you ban nuns, yes or no? Uh, how about priests and their goofy-ass dresses? How about that? Do you ban Orthodox Christians and their goofy dresses and their goofy hats? Uh, or how about Orthodox Jews and their traditional clothes? Guys, 
I live maybe 30 minutes away from a community of, uh, you know, Orthodox Jews, and they all dress in that traditional garb, and they all have the goofy beard, and when I look at that, I go, oh, you guys are silly. Like, this is... It's more likely that you're literalists and fundamentalists, and you're wearing a costume. You're a grown-ass man wearing a costume. And it shows that, just like with all these other religious, you know, all this religious attire, you miss the ball. You miss the whole idea of modern civilization. And it, that's not liberal, it's not secular. But am I gonna ban you from wearing it? No, of course not. Because in a free society, you get to wear whatever the fuck you wanna wear. Okay, now, again, some people will rightly point out, but many of them haven't chosen. That's true. So how do we attack that problem? Well, we need to, we absolutely have to. This is non-negotiable in my mind. Secular schools. You have to have secular schools. Because, you know, that's the only way you get education that's actually real education. <laughs> like, to say, oh, religious schools are equal to secular schools, that's just not true. In, re in religious schools, they could teach creationism, for example, and say, oh, this is what's true, and forget evolution. Okay, well, now you're just lying to the kids, and that's not okay. So the state should say, no, secular schools are the way to go, and that's what we do here. And then if you give people a secular education, well, then you're letting them know... Here are the facts, and you make your own decision, and given the facts, many more people will choose to not dress in a conservative, religious way, and in a fundamentalist way. And if there are some who still do choose it, well, okay, then you gotta let them do it. And don't say, it's not the case that every woman who's wearing this was forced by somebody in their family. In some cases, that's true, and we're against that. But there are some who choose it, and they tell you they choose it. And for you to say, no, I disagree with you, that, that doesn't mean anything. They're telling you what they chose. So it doesn't matter if you disagree, they could still wear it. You know, I could tell an Orthodox Jewish person or a, a, a nun, like, okay, I don't think that you chose to wear this. They say, okay, it doesn't matter what the fuck you think, I chose to wear it, I'm gonna wear it. So what am I gonna do? C come in there with a gun and say, I'm gonna need you to take that off? That's ridiculous. And then on top of all this, Guy, the fucking wetsuit looks exactly like the burkini. <laughs> you want to talk about a loophole, so what if they show up in a wetsuit and they're like, I need you to take off your burkini. And then they just say, no, this is a wetsuit. This is a wetsuit. I wear this every time I go to the beach. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? It's a wetsuit. I've always worn this. This isn't a burkini. I don't believe in burkinis. I'm wearing a wetsuit. Well, what are they going to do? You're not banned. Wetsuits aren't banned under, <laughs> under the law. So it's just a goofy way to try to attack a real issue. Like, don't get me wrong, it is a real issue that more it, there are people who are wearing conservative fundamentalist uh, dress. And we should, here's the main point. We should be able to logically argue against something and say, that's not cool, that represents fundamentalism and oppression of women and misogyny. We should be able to argue against that and say it's not cool. It's not good, while at the same time saying, having said that, I, I, if you, at the end of the day, if you really do choose to wear it, I respect your right to wear it. Again, I would let people wear fucking KKK outfits, I'd let people wear fucking Nazi outfits, uh, you know, you could walk around however, you could put your fucking underwear on your head, I don't give a fuck, you could walk around in a Halloween costume every single day, that's the point of a free society. So, two separate thoughts are true at the same time. Yes, conservative fundamentalist... Uh, dress is conservative and fundamentalist, and I'm against it. It's- that's not okay. It's not good. Like, you're not a hero for dressing in a way that says, I believe in mythologies and that they're literally true. That's silly. But yeah, I'm not gonna force you to take it off. Don't be ridiculous. Okay, so, that's the first thing on the burkini. Now, the second thing is more broadly on, you know, the burqa, the niqab, the hijab, the headscarf, different, uh, female Muslim attire. Uh, BBC reports here, Police Scotland has announced women from Muslim communities may now wear the hijab as part of their uniform. It is part of an attempt to encourage Muslim women to consider pursuing a career in the force. Okay. Now, this one, I'm against. Now, some people are gonna say, well, that doesn't make any sense. You're just for it there, now you're against it here. Why? This is for a government job and you're giving people special treatment. So, if they said, okay, to try to get more Muslim women on the police force, we're gonna allow, we're, we've now gotten rid of our ban on headwear, so anybody could wear headwear. Well, then I'd say, okay, that's fine, whatever. 
But they're not saying that. They're saying, specifically for Muslim women, you can wear whatever you want on your head, but if you're a secular person, let's say, I don't know, you're a dude who's going bald, and you're really embarrassed, and you want to fucking show your head, and you want to wear a hat. And they say, no, you're not allowed to cover your head, but they're allowed to cover their head because they're Muslim women. Well, then you just said religion gets special treatment, not equal treatment, and I'm against it. So again, if you say, well, we're just getting rid of our, you know, restrictions on headwear and anybody can wear whatever headwear they want, then that's fine. I'm, I'm cool with it. But if you say, no, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna allow headwear just for Muslim women and just for this religious reason, well, then you're giving religion special treatment. It's not equal treatment, and I'm against it. And look, this all gets down to the whole point of secularism. What is secularism? I think a lot of people don't fully understand what secularism is. I think I know a thing or two about it. What's the name of my channel again? So, secularism is a non-religious government. It's a non-religious government that allows for freedom and is neutral. So, in other words, you're allowed- in a secular society, you're allowed to be Muslim. You're allowed to be Buddhist, you're allowed to be Hindu, you're allowed to be Christian, you're allowed to be atheist, you're allowed to be agnostic, you can be whatever the fuck you want to be. As long as you're not hurting anybody else, and as long as you're not forcing your government onto everybody else, Forcing your government, forcing your religion onto everybody else through the government. So, you understand? That's super important. In other words, secularism means there will be no religion forced on anybody through this government, and we are just, we have just, as a government, we have checked out of religious issues. But in that society, you're still allowed to be whatever you want to be. So, secularism is very distinctly different from state-enforced irreligiosity. And you get state-enforced irreligion in many communist societies, for example. So, China, they discourage people being religious. You know, obviously, not to go to the extreme examples here, but, uh, Stalin and the Soviet Union. That's not- it's not- it wasn't a secular government, it was a state-enforced irre irreligious government. So, in other words, the state is not religious, but also, we're gonna try to force the people to not be religious either. No, that I'm against, because that, that's fundamentally anti-freedom. So, in a secular government, you can be Muslim, you can be Buddhist, you can be Jewish, you can be Christian, you can be an atheist, you can be whatever the fuck you want to be. It, and the government can't try to force you to, to be something else. But you also can't force the government to just enforce your religious views on everybody else. So there's a big difference there, and what France is doing by going down this road with banning the burkini, is they're not saying we're a secular society. They're saying we are going to be a, a, a government that forces people to be irreligious to a degree. That's not cool, man. And I don't agree with that. You can argue against the, uh, the conservatism and fundamentalism and religion without resorting to bans that aren't going to change anything. Did you know the sales of the burkini shot up over 200%? since this ban. You just accomplished the exact opposite of what you wanted to do. The whole idea was we want people to not like it as much because it's conservative and it's fundamentalist and that's not cool. Yeah, but you just had the opposite effect. So even on pure practical grounds and pragmatic grounds, you're being ridiculous and you're wrong. So there's a way to argue against it without banning it and therefore creating a legitimate victim complex that feeds this fundamentalism and this conservatism within Islam. There are many Muslim countries where women are forced to cover up. That's not okay either. <laughs> like, let's be clear, that's horrendous. So, we need to be able to support the freedom in the West of women to wear and do whatever they want, and also say, well, obviously the compulsory veiling and covering up of women in Saudi Arabia, Iran, and elsewhere, that should be changed, too! So it's stupid when people from those countries who support those laws say, I cannot believe that you are making women take off their burkinis. How dare you control women like that? Bitch, look at what you're doing! You're forcing them to cover up! So, stop, stop, stop. No. Uh, again, I support women's freedom across the board. I'm against the forced veiling and compulsory covering up of women in many of these countries. They should be able to do whatever they want, and I'm in favor of them doing whatever they want here, too. So, we're consistent unlike many other people in this discussion.